The banks that we targeted today, Bank of America and Wells Fargo, fund not only the extraction, but the export and the burning of coal across America and around the world. We wanted to show them that we, as investors, as people in the community, we disagree with this. We want them to divest from coal. And we also want the public to know that these banks are funding climate change, that coal fuels climate change, and these banks are funding it. So we came out today with a group of people who are all going to power shift the nationwide youth climate movement. And they came, they learned about coal, and they targeted the banks, and they're going to go take this spirit of direct action, of challenging corporate power to power shift in D.C. in just a few weeks, and they're going to change, uh, change policy there. Power shift is a nationwide youth climate movement. It brings in um, groups from all across the country and helps decide where the youth climate movement is. It forms the voice of the youth climate movement. And we're very excited that we were able to work with the power shift group, groups from the Northwest doing this direct action against coal funding banks and they'll take this experience and they'll take this knowledge to DC and they'll use it um, to influence the youth climate movement. Targeting uh, coal funding banks has been a long practice, uh, especially in Appalachia. Uh, they've been doing this for about 10 years and they've had successes in getting banks to divest uh, and getting people to pull out from those banks. In the Northwest, we haven't, this is the beginning of our coal campaign, so we have very high hopes and I think with actions like this, uh, continuing on into the future, we should see success. Well, in the Northwest, we are fighting coal export facilities. This is um, millions and millions of tons. We're talking like 60 million tons of coal every year coming through our region, the Columbia River, being exported to China. So this is not only um, fueling like more extraction in the Powder River Basin, but it's also just fueling uh, coal infrastructure. And as we move into the future, um, the focus should not be spending money on on coal infrastructure, the focus should be spending money on um, renewables and and lower uh, impact lifestyles. The BLM did just open up um, hundreds and hundreds of acres of land leases in the Powder River Basin for export and um, or for extraction. No doubt, with the idea that this, that this coal that they would be extracting would be exported through our waters here in the Columbia to Asian markets. If we're able to shut down this. Uh, these coal, these coal export facilities, there will be no market for this coal. So that coal, that land will stay in the ground. What's fueling climate change is the extraction of coal. And corporations are behind this. Corporations are, these coal corporations are influencing government policy. Um, and they're influencing where, where our future will go. And the, the, the point of this action, the point of the power shift movement, is to reclaim that power, to bring it back into our hands, to take the money away from, to take the power away from these corporations and put it back where it belongs in the voice of the people, the ranchers, the tribes, uh, the local residents. I'm with Blue Mountains Biodiversity Project and I've been volunteering with Rising Tide and we came here today with a bunch of students from PowerShift just to um, show the public what we think of the Bank of America and Wells Fargo investing in coal-fired power plants. Coal is a third of the U.S. Uh, climate change causing emissions so it's very important to get the banks to divest and already actions by Rising Tide, Earth First and others have convinced big banks like Citigroup to divest. So we're still targeting Bank of America and Wells Fargo in particular. And this is something that Rainforest Action Network is doing also. And it's important to know that there's nothing clean about coal. There's no such thing as clean coal. 12,000 miners died in, through coal mining activities in 10 years alone from 1992 to 2000. And uh, coal is the fifth largest global greenhouse gas emitting problem. Global greenhouse gas emissions, coal is one fifth of that. And for the U.S., it's one third of all greenhouse gas emissions. And scientist James Hansen believes that it's the number one priority to stop coal fired power plants, new plants from coming on, and start shutting down the existing ones if we want to slow climate change at all. It's the biggest emitter of mercury, which is an incredibly dangerous, toxic uh, metal. Uh, it doesn't take much mercury at all to kill someone. Uh, and it also emits arsenic, selenium, a number of other um, heavy metals, toxins.
Well, the EPA under Obama's administration now has free reign to regulate carbon dioxide emissions in particular, and that's one reason this kind of action is so effective, because the banks are already skeptical about investing in, in coal-fired power plants, new ones coming online, because they know that it's about to be regulated. So we're trying to pressure the banks to do the right thing. I read a book called Climate Hope by Ted Nace, and he covered um, the coal-fired power plants that were planned uh, starting in around 2007. And thanks to actions by Greenpeace, Rainforest Action Network, Rising Tide, which this action was, and others, including local communities and Climate Ground Zero, out of 154 proposed new coal-fired power plants in the U.S., 94 have already been stopped or put on hold indefinitely. Uh, thanks to a lot of direct action as well as some legislative and litigation attempts on the part of the Sierra Club and others. There's a coal-fired power plant in Boardman which is now online to be shut down and I think it should be shut down immediately. It's not supposed to be shut down until 2014 or later at this point, but it's the biggest source of particulate pollution and uh, haze in Oregon. So I hope the nuclear will go the same route because nuclear power is no solution either. We can see with Japan's a uh, horrible accident uh, where they are having a core meltdown. They did discover plutonium outside the reactors. If that reactor explodes, uh, as the others have with hydrogen explosions from pressure, then plutonium could go across in a giant plume across Japan and basically make Japan uninhabitable for 250,000 years, all contaminated with cancers, uh, severe deformities for generations and the emissions have already reached just from without even having that meltdown we've already seen signs of the contamination in California and Washington State reaching here so if there's a major meltdown that's what could happen and it and those reactors were fairly well regulated compared to the rest of the world and had a standard design that's in common use in this country so nuclear power is only as safe as the concrete which is not safe enough uh, there's no way that we should be switching to nuclear power. Right now, there's enough renewable energy options that are clean and safe that there's no need for nuclear power to deal with climate change.